This is video number 17 in our series dealing in various topics in quantum mechanics. The playlist for all the videos, incidentally, are at the website digital-university.org. Okay, in the previous video, we were discussing Dirac orthonormalization, and hopefully we can get that taken care of uh, in this video here. Where we had left off is, in the last video we said, well, suppose we have some functions that are literally independent and they're complete. So that means that any function can be expressed as a linear combination of these complete set of linearly independent functions. Then we said, well, if these functions, besides being literally independent, if they're also orthonormal, if they satisfy this condition, then this coefficient is equal to the inner product of this with this. Now, in this situation, then, the n's just take on discrete values. So f of x is equal to n of 1, n of 2, etc. Then we said, well, suppose we have this situation where we have some functions that are complete, but the variables, in this case p instead of n, they don't just take on values 1, 2, and 3, and so forth, but they take on a whole continuous set of values. Then we said, well, sure, if these are complete, you can still get another function f of x, but since these now are continuous, we have to do it by integrating, not just by summing like this. Well, that would mean then that this, this function here, if p is continuous, then this would be a function of p and of x. And then that brought in the discussion of the momentum eigenfunctions. And what Dirac said is that, yes, they do form a complete set in this sense. First of all, let's look at this. This is a function of p and of x. p is the uh, eigenvalue of the momentum eigenfunction, but they don't take on a discrete set of values, they take on a continuous set of values. So what Dirac said is, yes, they're, they are complete in this sense. If we use them in an integral like this, and here now the CP could just be a function, a function only of P. Well, what Dirac said was, let's use these eigenfunctions in this type of integral. Well, then now, instead of f of x, we'll just talk about psi of x. And we'll explain this in a moment. And that will be equal to this integral. And instead of f of p, we'll say psi of p. And we'll explain that in a moment. And this is this. So on the outside of the integral, We have 2 pi h bar. And on the inside, we have and we are integrating from minus infinity up to plus infinity. Now here in this case, the psi of x is the wave function of x, the position wave function of x. Now remember, we're just discussing particles on the x-axis, but this has the property that when you multiply it by its complex conjugate, this gives the probability of locating the particle in a particular region along the x-axis. But what is this? This has the property that when you multiply this by its complex conjugate, it gives you the probability that the particle will have a certain momentum. So this is a wave function of position. This is a wave function of momentum. And this is the eigenfunction. This divided by this is the eigenfunction of the momentum operator. So what Dirac was saying is that, yes, these eigenfunctions are complete, 
in the sense that when you use them in this integral together with a momentum wave function, it will give you the position wave function. But that integral right there, you probably recognize that from the previous videos, that's a four-way type integral, which means that it has a counterpart. And we have psi of p equals 1 over the square root of 2 pi h bar times this integral. So, one of the consequences of Dirac saying that, yes, these eigenfunctions from the momentum operator are complete in this sense here, well, that means then that the position wave function and the momentum wave function are four-way transforms of each other. So that was one of the consequences of Dirac's work. Now, but let's ask this question. Well, is this equal to, and I think we forgot to include the x here. I forgot to include the x here. Yes, we left off the x in each case. Okay, um, if we take the inner product of this, actually we'll take the inner product of this divided by this, that square root business. If I take, if we take the inner product of this with this, will it give us this? Just like up here, if we take the inner product of this with this, it gives us this. Well, here, of course, these were orthonormal. If I take the inner product of these, will it give us this? And the answer to that question is, yes, it will, provided we expand our definition of orthonormality to include this, where the inner product is a Dirac delta function. And why that should be is what we want to demonstrate next. So let's make some room. And where we are right now in this video is here then we started with this and then we got these two expressions the four-way transform pair for the wave function of position and the wave function of momentum and now this divided by this that is just the momentum eigenfunction. This is its complex conjugate. Okay, now we want to know then if we take the inner product of this divided by this, well that's this. So we want to know if we take the inner product of this with this, does it give us this? Just like up here, we took the inner product of here and here to get this, take the inner product of this divided by this, take those inner products, will it give us that? Realizing that this divided by this is an eigen, is a momentum eigenfunction. So what we have is take the inner product of this, c pi psi p of x with psi of x take that inner product. And we're making this divided by square root. That divided by that is and this is inside the integral sign just like this was inside the summation sign and we took the bra of that. So in our inner product, we're going to take the bra of this, which we have right here. 
and we have this. Now, what does what is this equal to? Okay, so we have this psi p of x with psi of x. But psi of x is this. It's our integral. And here we'll call this, change the dummy variable to here to psi p prime. And this divided by that square root is this. So we're going to have psi p prime x dp prime. So this is equal to this. Well here, okay, now here we're integrating with respect to dp prime. We have psi of p prime x and psi of p prime. We can take this inside of this integral then as a constant. So this would be equal to the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity psi p prime. Now we have this psi p of x and we're going to take the inner product of that with psi p of x, p prime of x. dp prime. So what we did was we moved this inside the integral because this can be said like a constant because you were integrating with respect to p prime. So this stays the same right here. Now this comes in and we take the inner product of this and this. Integrate with respect to dp prime. But remember from our previous videos that this is the direct delta function. So this part right here is the direct delta function of p prime minus p. So let's see what our integral is. This now becomes the integral from here we have psi p prime direct delta function of p prime minus p dp prime. This is zero everywhere except when p prime equals p. So this is going to become psi of p. We're integrating with respect to p prime so you can treat it like a constant. This comes to the outside of the integral. So that equals psi of p. Then what's left inside of the integral is this and that's equal to 1. We've discussed that in the previous videos. So we have then that our inner product equals psi of p. That's what we've just demonstrated. So what we have shown then is that here was our one of our four-way equations and we said alright if we take the inner product of this with this, does it give us that? And the answer to that question is yes, provided that this inner product right here is equal to the Dirac delta function. And that is completely analogous to this. We had this expression. These were complete functions. They were orthonormal. And when you had that orthonormality, this was equal to the inner product of this with this. Well here, this is equal to the inner product of this with this, provided that now the orthonormality includes this. So 
What Dirac did was he expanded the definition of orthonormality to include this Dirac delta function. So it turns out then that the momentum eigenfunctions are complete and they also then are orthonormal when we expand our definition of orthonormality. And that is what Dirac did. Now, what about the eigenfunctions for the position operator? Well, okay, we said that the momentum eigenfunctions for the momentum operator, this divided by this, are complete in the sense that when you integrate them together with the momentum wave function, it will always give you the position wave function. Now, with the position operator, its eigenfunctions are this. Well, these two are always complete in this sense. That when I integrate these with some function f of y, I will always get some function f of x. That's just the property of the Dirac delta function, as we've shown in the past videos. So yes, we can also think of the eigenfunctions of the moment of the position operator. Those two are complete in that sense. And we also showed in the previous video that if this is if this right here is an eigenfunction for position, and this is a different one, when we take their inner product, you get the direct delta function, and that now is encompassed in our new definition of orthonormalization. So that is what Dirac did. He expanded the definition of orthonormalization to include this. And then when he did that, he was going back to when he said, yes, these momentum eigenfunctions, which come from the momentum operator, which is her mission, they are complete in this sense. And they are orthonormal in this sense, which is completely analogous with the previous concepts of orthonormality. He just expanded upon that original concept. Okay, that's it for this video then. Um, hope that was helpful. It took us a long time to work up to this. But this is a very important um, concept in quantum mechanics, this whole process of Dirac orthonormalization. Anyway, come back and join us for some more videos, and we'll continue along with our discussions.